today's world of computer technology, many things can be done by simply pushing buttons. You can talk to someone thousands of miles away. You can withdraw money hundreds of miles from your bank. And yes, you can diagnose the complicated electronics of today's automotive engines. Hello, and welcome to the June release of Videotech. If you recall, the January release introduced the DRB2 tester and showed how to use it on Jeep and Eagle vehicles. This month, we'll again concentrate on the DRB2, but this time, we'll show you how to use it on Mitsubishi-made Chrysler and Jeep Eagle vehicles. Now, we'll cover the hookup of the tester and the MMC adapter, run through all the tests they can perform, and we'll even take a peek at the MMC powertrain diagnostic procedure manuals. Oh, good. You're just in time to help me demonstrate the DRB2, Tom. Okay, but wasn't this covered in January? Well, yes. That's just what I was explaining. But using the DRB2 with the Mitsubishi adapter is quite different. First of all, the tests you can perform with the MMC adapter are different. For 1989 model year Chrysler and Jeep Eagle imports, the DRB2 tests only the fuel systems. And not all the DRB2 keys are used, and the tests are performed as groups. Uh, well, let's just get going, and I'll show you. There's still four basic components you need to operate this system. The DRB2, the MMC adapter, the MMC cartridge, and of course, the MMC Diagnostic Procedures Manual. So there's a different adapter, cartridge, and manual for MMC vehicles. Right. But there are two different MMC cartridges you could use. Cartridge 1 can be used on 1 1.5, 1 1.6, and 1.6 liter turbo engines. But cartridge two covers the same engines as in cartridge one plus all 1989 1.8, 2.0, and three liter engines, and the 1990 Diamond Star engines. And I see that the two cartridges have different colored labels. Let's see, two white stripes for cartridge one and an all red label on cartridge two. That's right. And there are also three different manuals you can use on 1989 MMC vehicles. The 1.5, 1.6, and 1.6 liter turbo manual, the 1.8 and 2.0 liter manual, and the three liter manual. This Summit has a 1.6 liter engine, so we'll be using this 1.5, 1.6, 1.6 liter turbo manual. Let's take a look at the manuals, since they're quite a bit different than the domestic Jeep Eagle manuals. Now, there are four different sections in each of the manuals. First, the introduction, which covers all the information related to the DRB2. Second is the first of three different types of tests, the visual inspection test. Now, this takes you through a visual check of the engine's components to make sure the problem isn't simply a disconnected circuit. Third are the no-start tests, for when the vehicle cannot run. And last are the drivability tests. Now, these cover the individual components and their circuits. So if a vehicle came in with a specific drivability problem, the first thing I would do would be a visual inspection. Right. Then you would follow the drivability test DR1, which tells you to hook up the DRB2 and get the fault codes from the ECU. Now, the manual would then tell you what tests to perform for the fault code, and one more thing. The manuals are divided into specific engine applications. In this manual, the 1.5 liter is first, and the 1.6 and the 1.6 liter turbo are at the back. But let's get going. You take the DRB2, and I'll take the adapter, and we'll hook it up. On all Jeep and Eagle Mitsubishi import vehicles, the vehicle's diagnostic connector is somewhere under the dashboard. The powertrain diagnostic manual shows the location of the specific vehicle you're working on. Now, on this summit, it's here under the instrument panel next to the fuse junction block. Now, there are four simple steps in the hookup of the system. Wait, I, I think I know this. Or is the hookup different, too? Well, 
it's relatively the same with just a couple of differences. You start by hooking up the adapter's diagnostic connector into the vehicle's 12-way diagnostic port. The second step is to plug the adapter's eight-way connector into the DRB2's connector. Now, here's the cable. Hook that up for me. Now I just line up the notches, right? Right. Third, take the MMC adapter's red alligator clip and attach it to the vehicle's battery positive. Want to help me out with that, too? Sure, no problem. You're right, we didn't do this with the Jeep Eagle adapter. And the last step is to insert the cartridge into the DRB2. Could you hand me cartridge number two? Is that the one with the red label? Right. Now be sure that the label is up or towards you when you slide it in. Then you would turn the key to the on position or start the engine depending upon the specific test you'll be performing. What do you mean? Well, let's take a look at the 1.6 liter manual and I'll show you. You see here in the flow diagram that there are six DRB2 test groups you can perform on MMC vehicles. Okay, there's a fault codes, sensor tests, switches running, switches not running, actuator test running, actuator test not running, and running and not running mean the vehicle, right? That's right. And for the fault codes and sensor tests, again, the key can be in the on position or the engine can be running. It doesn't matter either way. So, let's get going with our tests. Let's go through this one more time. Now, the first few seconds the DRB2 is powered up, it will display a test screen, beep, and light the red and green LED lights. If it passes its self-test, a Chrysler Motors copyright message will appear, then a Mitsubishi adapter message, then the screen will freeze on the select model year display. But what happens if there's a system error? Well, if a problem is discovered during the self-test, one of eight error screens will be displayed. These include a RAM test failure in the DRB2, a keypad test failure where a key may be shorted, low or high battery voltage warnings, an SCI test failure indicating a bad connection between the DRB2 system components, a warning that the wrong adapter or no adapter is in use, and one of two cartridge error warnings indicating a problem with the cartridge. Now, each of these error screens are covered in the introduction of the three powertrain diagnostic procedures manuals. But if everything goes well with the self-test... Well, then, the Mitsubishi adapter message will be displayed followed quickly by the select model year screen, which is the first place you have to press a key to continue. So, let's take a minute to go over the keypad usage. Now, in January, the key functions were covered in depth, but it's a little different when you're using the tester on Chrysler and Jeep Eagle Mitsubishi import vehicles. Only six keys are used for the 1989 model year. The mode, enter, read hold, ATM, and all numbered keys are not used with the MMC adapter, which makes things pretty simple. You mean you don't press enter to make a choice? No. See, I told you it was different. Let me go over the six keys. The volt ohm key can be used anytime you're into one of these select group tests, sensor tests, switches tests, and actuator tests. When pressed, the DRB2 will act as a meter, displaying values in volts, ohms, or even an overrange reading. Meaning that the resistance is higher than what the ohmmeter can measure. Right. Now, the yes down arrow and no up arrow keys are used to either get into or out of a specific test group, such as when choosing vehicle applications. Pressing yes will continue you forward through a test, while the no key returns you to the previous screen. The F1 left arrow and F2 right arrow keys will guide you through a list of choices within a test group. Oh, like when you're choosing engine applications. Right. And the last key is the F3 key. That's for getting more help on what to do next. Well, no, it's, it's different with the MMC vehicles. When performing a sensor test, 
the F3 key will convert any temperature or pressure measurement from English to metric and back. So if the intake air temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I can press F3 and get the temp in Celsius? Well, that's good to know. So, do you think you've got all that? Yeah. It's not hard when you only have to remember six keys. Good. Then let's continue on and look at the tests themselves. Okay, now the screen was asking us to select a vehicle model year. But since this is the first year, the DRB2 can be used with Chrysler and Jeep Eagle imports. There's only one choice, 1989. So you press the yes key. That's right. Pressing yes will tell the DRB2 that's the selection you want. In fact, at this point, all keys except the yes key will be ignored. So go ahead and press it. Okay. Well, it says select system and engine, but it doesn't show any more choices. For 1989, engine diagnostics are the only tests you can perform. And in the future, you'll have more systems to choose from. But for now, you've got to let the DRB2 know that you want to select an engine. You could either press no to get back to model year, or yes for a list of system engines. Go ahead and press the yes key once more. OK, on MMC cartridge 2 only, the DRB2 will display a message to make sure the key is in the on position. So press yes once more for the engine choices. OK, so it has 1.5 liter MPI engine. Right. And do you remember which keys will show you more choices? Yep, F2. Either F1 or F2 will give you another choice of the menu. Keep pressing F2. You see, by repeatedly pressing F2, we're shown the rest of the engine choices. Now, would the 1.8 liter engine be on the menu if we were using cartridge one? No. Remember, Cartridge 1 only has 1.5, 1.6, and 1.6 liter turbo engines. But let's make our choice, the 1.6 liter on the Summit. OK, I press F1 to get back to the 1.6 liter engine, and press yes to make the choice. Right. Now it's asking for the vehicle emission certification, California or federal. OK, well, based upon the emissions label under the hood, we know this is a federally certified vehicle. So I press yes, and it says select test fault codes. OK, this is where you select the test group you want to go into. Press F2, and you'll see the other choices I told you about. OK, sensor tests, multiple displays, switch is running, switch is not running, ATM running, and ATM not running. Now, ATM stands for actuator test mode, right? That's right. But going back to the multiple display tests, it allows you to look at a group of sensors and is used primarily as a training tool. So we'll just skip it. But let's take a closer look at each of the other test groups, starting with the fault codes. OK, so I'll press F2 again to get back to the front of the menu and then press yes to select a test group. OK, the screen changed to a no fault code message. Well, that means that the vehicle hasn't stored any fault codes. Right. Now, nothing's stored in the ECU, which is good. There could be any of 15 possible fault codes detected by the ECU and displayed through the DRB2. They are the oxygen sensor, airflow sensor, intake air temperature sensor, TPS, motor position sensor, coolant temperature sensor, crank angle sensor, TDC sensor, vehicle speed sensor, barometric pressure sensor, detonation sensor, injector, fuel pump control relay, EGR system, and coil negative primary control. But let me show you how the faults are displayed. Press the no key to get out of the fault codes function, and I'll disconnect a few circuits. OK, I press no, and the screen puts us back into the select test menu. Right. Anytime you press no, you'll go back to your previous choice screen. OK, I'll disconnect an injector and the barometric 
intake air temperature, and air flow sensors. Okay, now we've got to start the car up and wait a minute for the faults to register. Now, some of the faults are a little slower to register than the others. Also, the EGR temperature sensor on California vehicles and the O2 sensor require a multiple startup. And the vehicle needs to be driven before the speed sensor will register a fault. Okay, now let's go back into the fault codes test and see what the screen displays. Press yes again, and I'll explain each display element. The top line lets you know if the displayed fault code is the only one. This says it's fault code number one of four, meaning there are three other stored codes. The second line shows a number followed by the fault description. The number 12 is simply the number of this specific fault and is used in the powertrain diagnostic procedures manual to direct you to the proper test. And when it asks you whether fault code 12 is displayed on the DRB2, it will direct you to the next step of the test. In this case, we would go on to test DR3. Then the last line means that I can press F1 or F2 to display the other fault codes. Yep, you're catching on. Go ahead and press F2 a few times. And notice, with each new fault code, the top line will tell you which fault it is. So what happens to the codes once you repair the problem? Good point. You have to disconnect the ECU from battery power for 10 seconds. And it's also a good idea to road test the vehicle to make sure the code doesn't reset. That's the only way to be sure you've taken care of the problem. OK, let's go on to the next group of tests. Now I press no to get out of the fault codes function. F2 to give to the sensor tests, and yes to choose the test group. Boy, this is really easy once you get the hang of it. So what do the sensor tests do? The sensor test group will monitor and display the various measures of the engine system. So let's run through them. There's the O2 state, lean or rich, O2 sensor, given in volts. Airflow sensor, given in hertz. Intake air temperature, in Fahrenheit, and press the F3 key for the same temperature in Celsius. Oh, yeah, OK, there it is. Why don't you take it from here? Uh, continuing on. Throttle position sensor, given in volts. ECU power supply, again in volts coolant temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius, crank angle and RPM, barometer sensor. Um, what's INHG ABS mean? IN stands for inches. HG is the chemical symbol for mercury, so it means inches of mercury. And ABS stands for absolute zero, which is a unit of temperature measurement. But all you have to do is get the number. The procedure in the manual will tell you what to do next. OK. Injector pulse in MS is how many milliseconds the injector is open? Right. OK. Total advance? Oh, one thing about this reading. This figure is not always total advance. It's a number proportional to the engine RPM, but you shouldn't use it to set timing. OK. You could just use a timing light instead. OK. AIS motor steps given in the number of steps. And we're back to the front of the list. And more information on these measurements can be found in the introduction of the manuals. And the EGR temperature is taken for California certified vehicles only. OK. So what's next? Switches tests. In this test group, the DRB2 will tell us uh, whether certain circuits are open or closed. OK. OK. No. F2 to get the switches running. And yes, and, and wait, it's telling us to start the engine. That's right. The DRB2 is still watching out for us, reminding us that to perform the switches running tests, 
It would help to have the engine running. I'll take care of it. But what does this group of tests do? Well, there are five switch circuits you can test with the engine running. Take a look. Okay, there's the idle switch circuit, power steering switch circuit, air conditioning switch circuit, park neutral, and air conditioning relay. And the DRB2 tells us whether the circuits are open or closed. Right, but let me go over the parameters of each circuit. The idle switch circuit simply opens and closes when the throttle does. The power steering switch circuit is closed when the steering pressure is above approximately 231 PSI and open when below these pressures. The air conditioning switch circuit is closed when the AC and blower switches are on and open when they're off. The park neutral circuit is closed when the vehicle is in park or neutral and open when it's in gear. And the air conditioning relay is normally open and is closed when the ECU provides a ground for the AC clutch relay. So how is the switch's not running test any different? Well, not too much. The switch's tests with the engine not running and the key on are exactly the same, with one exception. The DRB2 can perform one test not available with the engine running, the crank signal circuit test. The DRB2 will display closed only when the engine is being cranked. And again, the other not running switch tests are the same as with the vehicle running. Okay, are you ready for the last two test groups? Yeah, let's get at them. Okay, our last two test groups are ATM running and ATM not running. But these two are different from all the other tests we've done because by performing these tests, we're actually controlling the ECU. You mean we can make things happen through the ECU? Exactly. We can turn the injectors, the fuel pump, the fuel pressure solenoid, EGR solenoid, and wastegate solenoid on and off at six second intervals to test their operation. Let's get into it. Okay, I press no. F2 twice to get to the ATM running. And yes to get into the function. It says select test item and injector one. Right, now, let's test injector number three. Okay, press F2 a couple of times to get to the injector three screen. But it's important to understand that injector three is not the third in the firing sequence. It's cylinder number three. Okay, then I press yes to test that injector. Now it says the injector is off and the green LED light is on. Right. And six seconds later, the injector will go back on and the green light will go off. This 12 second on and off cycle will continue for about five minutes, unless you get out of the test. Now, to get out, I just press no, right? Right, but you have to wait until the green light is off before you end the test. This prevents you from ending the test and leaving one of the injectors off. So I wait for the light to go off and then press no to exit. What would happen if the key were turned off during the test? Well, the DRB2 would display an error screen. Okay, now for our last test group, the actuator test with the engine off. Now this group tests as many as five possible ATM tests, depending on the engine. Okay, I press F2 to get to the ATM not running, and yes. What well, says to stop the engine and to turn the key back on? Okay, let me do that. And I'll tell you what, I won't leave the key in the on position. So tell me what the DRB2 says. You're right. It tells us that it can't communicate with the vehicle. Okay, turn the key on now. Okay, press the yes key. It changed to the select test fuel pump. Hey, I can hear it start the fuel pump. Sure. Okay. Six seconds on. And, yep, they both turned off at the same time. Pretty sharp. Sure. Well, the light is off, so I can end the test. 
go ahead and look at the other tests available. Okay, we can also test the purge solenoid. And that's it. You said there are five tests. Well, there are, but not on this vehicle. On vehicles equipped with turbo engines, you can test the fuel pressure solenoid and the wastegate solenoid. And on California certified vehicles, you can test the EGR solenoid. And how does the DRB2 know if the vehicle doesn't have these components? Let's look at the manual. Now, back when we started, we told the DRB2 which engine and certification the vehicle had. Now, it stored that information and only gave us test choices available for this vehicle. Well, that does it for the six kinds of tests you can run on 1989 Chrysler and Jeep Eagle import vehicles. Did you follow it all? Yeah, I think so. But let me look at the manual once more to make sure. We powered up the DRB2, chose our engine, the vehicle certification, and then our choice of six test groups. Okay, quick quiz. Can you name off the six test groups we covered without looking at the manual? Yeah. Um, fault codes, the sensor tests, switches tests running and not running, and uh, uh, actuator tests running and not running. Okay, but how about what each one tests, starting with the fault codes? No problem. The fault codes test group shows you any faults that may be stored in the ECU. Sensor test group monitors the temperatures, volts, and other measures for many of the engine's components. The switch is running and switch is not running, test check relays, switches, and circuits to see if they're open or closed. The actuator test with the vehicle running tests the injectors by turning them on and off at six second intervals. And the actuator test with the engine not running and the key on tests five engine components by also turning them on and off every six seconds. No problem. Using the DRB2 with the MMC adapter is easy. Yes, but all we've covered is what the tests are and how to execute them. What we didn't cover is when to perform them. And that's what the powertrain diagnostic procedure manuals are for. You can use the DRB2 and MMC adapter until your fingers fall off. But it won't tell you much unless you know what you're looking for. The DRB2 is a great time-saving device. And as we've seen today, very simple to use. But you still have to follow the manuals carefully so that you can make a quick and accurate diagnosis. Next month's release will take you through the Jeep Eagle domestic manuals and show you the best way to use them. One thing to be pointed out, though, the covers of both 1989 MMC manuals list charging systems and speed control tests as being included, which they're not. But the manual does have more than enough information to successfully perform drivability tests. When used properly, the powertrain diagnostic procedure manuals and the DRB2 with MMC adapter are fantastic tools to help you make quick and accurate repairs and keep your Jeep Eagle customers happy. We'll see you next month on Videotech.